pen friends this is tom with gold spot pens today we have a pilot pen for our unboxing and it is not just any ordinary pilot pen although this kind of looks like an ordinary pilot box it is one of pilots more higher ended items that comes with a special nib and i want to share this with you because it goes along with the pen that we had used in our previous video about stub versus flex nib pens. And the pen in question is the Custom 912. And it says Black Falcon. Well, this is also known as the FA nib. So this is uh, Custom 912 is a collection that are for writers because they offer a wide variety of different nib sizes, you know, beyond your normal extra fine, fine, medium, broad. Uh, they have several others that have unique tips, like this Pilot FA nib. So, as you notice, the if you're familiar with Pilot, the box is rather is is rather standard for a higher ended Pilot like a Falcon or a Vanishing Point. The 912 comes out of this sleeve here and has its transparent top clamshell type box. You see the pen very nicely there. It is tucked under a rubber band sort of cord. And this is the pen, but we'll get to that in just a second because we're just gonna take a little peek see underneath the platform here. And we see a Pilot Standard cartridge in blue. And then we also have a care and use guide. I have Larry's uh, Fountain Pens is checking in. Hey, how's it going, Larry? It's It certainly is. The nib itself is worthy of its own review, and it's certainly worthy of, of, of being on a wish list, that's for sure. And we'll get to that. We'll get to the writing experience. So we have a uh, Pilot Namiki guarantee, and we also have a little bit of a filling instruction demo and everything. And you might need this because you might not be familiar with the converter that's being used in here. So I'll put that back together. And, you know, for box peel, this, this pen really doesn't have much of it because it's a very simple box. It's really not something that you might expect for a pen that's of a $200 plus dollar price range, but this is what you get. And I mean, some people, they just throw away the box. So, um, you know, this is really, all this pen is centered about is the writing experience because as you look at it here it's a plain black pen it even has a little sticker on it so it lets you know which nib size that this is the fa the actual details of the pen itself is just it's a black injection mold resin very very simple not even talking a solid acrylic it's it's lighter weight in hand which is kind of a double-edged sword because while at the same time it's light and you could write with it forever and not get a hand cramp but it also kind of feels not as significant as some other uh, turned acrylic type pens. Nice little detail here, like you would see on the 823, is that the Custom 912 has a nicely engraved band made in Japan with some stars on here. And it says Custom 912, which is the model number. It has kind of like a sword, like a gladiator sword type of clip. Top ring here ends the finial, and you have another ring trim ring back here at the blind cap which does not unscrew so very simple very plain looking dressed to impress just regular black and silver type of pen doesn't really have the oohs and ahs of a lot of other pens that we feature here but then when you take a look at the nib and the nib when we take off the cap the screw off cap here i'm just trying to get it zoomed in if i could do that this is the FA nib. So you can notice that it looks totally different than what you would expect a normal nib to look like. It's got cutaways on both sides here. And the shoulders go quite narrow, almost like a, uh, kind of like the, the head of a squid, almost. You would see that. And um, it's got the plastic feed on there. It's a 14 karat gold nib. We're, un we're going to unscrew the section here metal threads just to note that so you don't want to eyedropper this pen the converter that's included is the con 70 which is essentially like a vacuum filling system and it holds a lot of ink 
I was singing the praises about this converter when I was playing around with it with the Custom 74, and the 912 comes with the standard. Love this converter. Definitely something that I wish that they applied to their vanishing points uh, because the Con 40 just, and it's this, this one humble penman's perspective, the Con 40 just sucks. So the, the Con 70 is so much better. I like it a lot. I filled it up with Pilot Blue Black. A buddy of ours, Mike, who lives in the area, he just was like, oh, I don't like Pilot Blue Black. Here, take this bottle of Blue Black. And now I use it a lot for reviews such as this because it's a very nicely behaved ink and we're going to give it a go here. But but first, we'll talk about the specifications. Um, so like I said, the FA nib is a 14 karat gold. It's a number 10 size, they call it in, uh, in Pilot terminology. Con 70 converter. It also fills using pilot disposable ink cartridges. The length closed is five and a half inches or 140 millimeters. The length open with the cap removed is 4.9 inches or 125 millimeters. Then you have the length closed. I mean, sorry, length posted is 6.2 inches or 157 millimeters. Then you have the diameter of the body is half an inch or 13 millimeters. And you have the uh, section right at this point here is 0.4 inches or 10 millimeters. The weight of the pen is 0.9 ounces or 25 grams. Very, very average. If you were to say this is plain vanilla, it is, it's like vanilla or chocolate. It's very average size pen, average weight uh, for, a, for a resin type of pen. Um, you know, but the really the key of it is this nib, and this is really what you're paying for. I mean, the what they built around it is a chassis that it it just will. It's a no nonsense approach to it. It will write with you nicely. You could write with it unposted. You could write with it posted, and uh, it just really has a beautiful a, a beautiful simplistic sort of look. The um, what we have here. So then we hit, we talked about the specs. The uh, the price going rate for these guys is two hundred and eighty dollars for retail. We have it on sale for two twenty four, I believe. So um, you know, still is it's a it's a higher price pointed pen, but when you compare it with something else I've got here, so we're gonna take a look at to compare it with too. Um, we're gonna actually see that this is actually a really good value for a pen that performs like this does. So let's get to it because we're going to talk about the writing. So we got to do some writing. Let's do this. So we got my uh, Rhodia dot pad out here. You might recognize this from other unboxings that we do. So let me just get, I'm just going to get seated down here so that I could uh, maybe we'll drop this back a little bit. All right. So we unscrew off the cap here. And when we have it unflexed, this is the, let me just write down, Pilot Custom 912 FA Nib. I'm not gonna go all crazy with flexing just yet. I'm just gonna show you what it's capable of doing, just writing with it like you would a normal round nib sort of fountain pen. And we have the ink is Pilot Blue Black Ink. So as just a normal, not using it as a flex sort of nib, it writes like like you would expect, let's say an extra fine would be in most Western styles or in Pilot, because Pilot doesn't really follow so much of the, the absolute thinness that a Sailor or Platinum would be. So this is more like, I would say like a Pilot extra fine as well. It's about when it's unflexed, I would say it's a roughly about a 0.5 millimeter line that I'm getting with this. And this may vary based on your hand pressure, based on the type of ink that you're using. But uh, roughly, this is what it's amounting to just without the, the flexibility. So 
you know, when we have now, what we could do is we could just kind of gently just put a little bit more pressure on it. I'm just gonna do some loops here. And you can see just from looking at the handwriting sample completely unflexed that this has changed the complexion of the writing completely. This, this now has, you're generating line variation and instead of just writing a simple, the quick brown fox, you're able to really embellish it See, so the nib completely changes once you start putting a bit of pressure on the tines. And in terms of like how much pressure, since it's 14 karat gold, and this is a step above the Pilot Falcon as far as how soft it is, I think just by virtue of the, how the nib is cut, how it has those cutaways on it, that it is so much easier to be able to put, to get the nib to start to flex than it would be with, let's say, a Falcon or looking at a steel flex nib. Um, it just it just does a wonderful job at yielding to a very minimal amount of finger pressure. And that's what you really love about a higher quality flex nib is the fact that you don't have to put so much darn pressure on the tines to make them spread out. And the other factor is the snapback. So when we're writing with it unflexed again, the unflexed line is back to an extra, uh, an extra fine, essentially. So what sometimes I notice happens, especially you're looking at, let's say, um, the Aurora, uh, the the flex the aurora flex nib or the omas uh, which is now the scribo uh, feel the flex nib is that when let's, let's say especially if you're doing these um, these figure eights where they call I call them like swirlies so you're doing like these figure eights here and with the figure eights when you come up and you relieve the pressure off the nib and you come back up to where it's putting no pressure at all the nib retains its form and the line starts to tighten up back to having no pressure at all. With the Aurora or the Omas slash Scribo bit, I would tend to find that this area right here where you, the, you let up on the nib, it will, it will still be thick. So it really doesn't retain that that thinness so much when you start to let up on the nib, which that's really what creates that uh, that that look of line variation is the is the ability to go from flex to no flex, flex to no flex, flex to no flex in such a dramatic fashion that you can notice that ratio of flex to unflex. So when completely flex, and I measured this earlier using a ruler, when I just want to push it, and I don't really push it to the point that I don't want to splay the tines, you get about a 1.1 millimeter thickness line. So that's an equivalent to a modest stub nib now. So you went from extra fine to stub in just the matter of putting pressure on the nib, which is amazing. That's why I love flex nibs. They're just so much fun to write with because you can have that amount of variation in just one pen. So I could go from writing small, little, tiny, detailed, marginalia type notes, and then I could go to writing like a giant, beautifully decorated header on, let's say, my uh, my latest bullet journaling page, like a collection listing or something. I could write a beautiful heading and then start jotting all sorts of notes below it. And it's the same pen. You know, what other, what other pens really give you that sort of versatility? 
and the ability to like switch into Spencerian mode at an at a moment's notice. And you could totally use it as a regular type of pen, you know, regular round nib type of pen without even flexing it. But it's just so much fun to kind of, you know, learn how to flex and and figure out how to do this in a way that makes your handwriting look absolutely phenomenal. Um, so when talking about the price of this pen, you know, we say it's a it's it's a it's a pen that's north of two hundred. So we're looking at like a sale price of like two twenty four, and when we're looking at let's say another pen, this is an Edison Menlo, and uh, this has a fourteen karat gold nib, which uh, my buddy Roy had actually permanently lent to me. We'll just say that, and this is a this is a Yovo number six size Yovo fourteen karat gold nib that was modified uh, by Linda Kennedy. Uh, who is a student of Richard Binder, and has modified this for flexibility. So something like this, which also provides flex, and I'll give you a little demonstration of that in just a second. So something like this is a pricey configuration. It's a custom configuration, but it's pricey. So I'll just show you like an example of what this can do. So this is the, which is not writing for me right now at the moment. There we go. There we go. So this is an Edison Menlo, 14K. Number six. Modified by Linda Kennedy of Indy. Pen dance. So this is just writing with it normally. I would say, you know, comparing it with, let's say, the the FA nib, that this is more of like a fine point, so roughly about 0 0.7 millimeters, completely unflexed. Uh, this is what we get when we flex it. I just got a little bit of railroading there, but it's kind of going quick. So roughly the same sort of variation in terms of the ratio between the unflexed and the flex line, but a little bit on the thicker side. So I kind of, I measured this out too earlier. Uh, I could even show you my notes. I, I measured these out. So I measured this out and this came to being about 1.5 millimeters at its thickest and then that 0.7 millimeters at the thinnest. So while it did give more a thicker line, it starts out as a thicker line. That's one of the things that you have to take into consideration when you do buy a flex nib. And let's say you're looking at the Falcons and you see that there's multiple point sizes. This is that when you look at an extra fine nib, you, uh, you start off as an extra fine, but then you could push it and make it thicker when you do flex it. So we, I tend to like want to go towards uh, the extra fine side if I do get a flex nib. Uh, because of the fact that you do start off with that ultra, ultra fine uh, line, which I would say this is not an extra fine. I don't know why I wrote that with this, but this is like more like a fine nine, but I would go with an extra fine. That's why I really like the, the custom 912 is because it does start off as an extra fine nib when you're just writing with it normally. And as far as like feedback wise, this does have a little bit of feedback, a little bit. Very little bit. I mean, you do you do feel the nib going around. It's not. It certainly is not by any stretch of the means scratchy. That dreaded S word is not scratchy. It is. It, it's it's feedback for a Japanese type of nib and something that you would expect for an extra fine. An extra fine, you need to have that fineness. So you, the trade off is you feel a little bit more feedback with the nib. This the Edison not so much. And the reason why I brought up the Edison is because I wanted to talk about price. So. Like I was saying, price for this retail wise, 280, but we sell it for about 224. And as a as a pen that's north of $200, people start to say, oh, well, you know, it's not that special. It's just black. It's just got that nib. But hey, if you want to go all out, this configuration, something like this would cost you north of $500. No kidding. Just the pen itself, the Menlo uh, draw filler. In the uh, since it's a signature model line and it's got the draw filling mechanism, which I'll show you here. So it's got the little piston uh, pump that's here. 
something like this just with a steel nib is going to be above $300 alone. Then you have the, the gold nib upgrade on it. And then on top of that, that it's customized by a nibmeister to provide flex, you're talking of a pen that is double the price of the custom 912. So, and performance-wise, roughly the same. This, the, the Edison's giving me a little bit thicker of a line to start off with, but flex-wise, roughly the same ratio. You're talking about double the, uh, or, or essentially like, yes, a double the amount of flexibility, you know, from your starting line. So for example, start at 0.7, it goes out to 1.5. The custom 912 starts at a 0.5, goes out to 1.1. So, you know, the, the variation is there for both of them. The amount of ink flow and the flexibility is there for both of them. The amount of snapback is there for both of them. So that's why I really compare both of these are, are very much for me on the same level. Do I love both of them? Yes, both of them are awesome. Aesthetically wise, the custom 912 really just, it lacks the, it lacks the, the pizzazz, let's just say, because it's a very standard black pen. That's why I've petitioned, and you can leave comments below too, so I could show uh, our, our general sales manager of Pilot USA. I've petitioned them on numerous occasions to put this nib on a custom 823. It makes sense, why not? Just do it, because you have a, a massive ink capacity in the custom 823. You have the vacuum filling system of the 823, and you have the fact that the 823 would be, you know, a, a partial demonstrator. So this is my plea, dear pilot. Put this up, oh, and I I spoke too soon. I ran out here. Oh, it just it just starved on me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this nib on eight twenty three. Now, reason why it could be railroading, I've been taking the cap off. I've been talking about it without writing with it. Could certainly have just dried out a little bit there, but it got going again. I just have to be a little bit patient with it. Uh, but that's just something I talked about in the video uh, to note here is that flex nibs require a little bit more patience than your standard writing nib because of the fact that they're a little bit more temperamental. And for the amount of benefit that you have that you see here, putting up with a little bit of a temperamental issue here and there, not so bad of a, of a trade-off there too. So, you know, that concludes uh, taking a look at the Pilot Custom 912 in the FA nib. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you could check out that previous video that we did, uh, stub versus flex nibs. Uh, and that is a good way to kind of see where you should be in terms of writing with a, a specialty nib that's other than your typical round type nibs. Uh, also, we will be doing a video on how to write with a flex nib. And, um, and I'll be doing that, putting that together. So if you have any questions that you would like to be answered on that video, uh, anything particularly that you would like for me to address, please leave a comment below and we'll address it in the video. So appreciate you guys tuning in and have a awesome 